this with all the subjects listed there. Uh, there you will find the links. In fact, every every session the links will be posted there. And I think you will also get a notification in your email, registered email, right? So you can check that out. Okay. Okay. So uh, Romans eight twenty six. Um, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit helps us with groanings uh, which cannot be uttered. Um, uh, you want an explanation of that? Yeah, that is also uh, one of the benefits of praying in tongues. It talks about, um, okay, um, it talks about, you know, how we don't sometimes know what we should pray for. And then so when we pray in the Spirit, when we pray in tongues, then... Uh, the Holy Spirit helps us with groanings, uh, with groanings which cannot be uttered, meaning groanings which, you know, these are groanings, which means there are noises and sounds, but they are not articulate speech, right? Groanings which cannot be uttered into articulate speech um, as we understand it. So, so that is also one of the benefits of praying in tongues, right? When you want to make a choice and when we say, okay, God, Holy Spirit, help me and you pray and then uh, the Holy Spirit helps us with groanings. Okay. Um, any other questions? You can post it. Um, okay, let's look at some some questions here that we have. Right? Do I have to tarry? Do I have to wait in order to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What do you think? Do I have to wait for a long time? You know, these people were waiting. Right? It says they were waiting. They were waiting in the upper room, and then they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So, how long do you need to wait? <laughs> Sorry? Um, anyone? Three days, three is a good number in the Bible. Not necessary? Okay. So how long did the, you know, the believers in Cornelius' house believe, wait? Not long, right? Nothing. They were just hearing, they believed, they got filled. So then why is it that the, the Lord Jesus told them, you know, you tarry in Jerusalem, you wait. For the promise of the father like for them the context is different you know they were to wait for that the day of pentecost right the lord in his purpose and plan wanted to fill them with the holy spirit baptize them with the holy spirit on the day of pentecost and so that's why the bible says when the day of pentecost had fully come and the believers were acts chapter 2 talks starts like that right so that was god's plan and purpose so we don't have to wait or the old word, you know, tarry in order to be filled with the spirit, right? You need to believe, you need to have that expectation and hunger and the Lord would fill you with, baptize you with the spirit, right? Okay. Um, Puja's question, women should remain silent in churches, then women should not speak in tongues. Okay. So uh, Puja, this whole aspect of women praying, not praying, keeping silent in church, you know, uh, it will be addressed in detail, like if you can just wait for some time, uh, in the subject, uh, Holy Spirit, where we're talking about the gifts and, you know, why, why not, etc. Now, in the verse that we just read, you know, 1 Corinthians 14, we see Paul saying, if does not someone does not have an interpretation, then let him keep silent in church. Now, what does he mean by that? He goes on to explain. He says, but let him pray between himself and God. So he explains, this is what silent in church is, meaning you're not speaking out, you're not addressing the crowd, addressing the congregation, but you're not disrupting anything, but between you and God, <coughs> sorry, between you and God, you pray. So the same thing applies, you know, in, in I think you, this is in, uh, several places, right? In Timothy, and then we see um, in Corinthians as well, where it's talking about silence. <coughs> so, um, in context, this is what it is. When it's talking about the gifts, this is what it is. You know, you're not addressing a church, you're not addressing a congregation without interpretation. He says, you pray between you, yourself, and God. And also, you know, uh, I, uh, for women to be, you know, either, I do not permit women to teach, and women should keep silent. He's talking about that particular congregation at that time where he's talking about people who are disrupting, right? They were, he goes on to say, you know, it is, you ask your husbands at home, 
which means their questions were actually disrupting the gathering. You know, one could infer, right? So he says, you ask your, you know, at home, you know, husbands at home, your own husbands at home, right? When we look at scripture, we see that there were women who prophesied, right? Philip's daughters, there were four of them who prophesied and, and all that. So where did they prophesy? To whom did they prophesy? Obviously, it was in the gathering of believers or maybe one-on-one. -on -one. So, so we see that, you know, it is, we need to study it in context. And also Ephesians 4, talking about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, is talking about, you know, God gave gifts to men, meaning, you know, he's talking about humankind, humanity, right? So he's not talking about gender there. He's talking about human, humankind to man. God made man. Right? So he's talking about humankind. So, uh, sorry. That, so that's the that's the explanation. Okay. So uh, about tearing, we saw. Now, do I have to have hands laid on me? What do you think? You see that Peter and John laid hands. Ananias laid hands. Right. And then people, Paul laid hands on the Ephesian disciples. Then they started praying in tongues. Is it imp is it necessary for people to lay hands and pray? What do you think? How many of you say yes? How many of you say no? Okay. Yeah. So it is not necessary. Well, God does use other ministers or other, other believers to lay hands and pray. God does do that. But it is not necessary. Now we see Cornelius house, nobody laid hands. Uh, uh, the 120 disciples, nobody lay hands. It was a sovereign move of God. So God works in both ways. So that is our answer, right? Okay. Then, do I need to be baptized in water? I think we understood that, right? Do I have to be baptized in water in, in order to be um, baptized in the Spirit? The order can be different, right? Okay. So I just want to uh, you know, encourage you to read through this um, book, this publication uh, another time in detail, go through the scriptures. I know we looked at some of the scriptures. There are others also. And also the book, The Wonderful Benefit of Praying in Tongues. Okay, so that kind of gives it a complete picture. Baptism and what happens at baptism and what is, the, you know, the, what are the, what is tongues and benefits of tongues and so on. Okay, so, um, so what we're going to do right now, any questions here among us, apart from whatever we address, yes. Hmm. Okay, okay. Right, right. Got it. What about that? Okay. So, um, so my next question is this, you know, what if there are only few words, few syllables, and uh, we just keep repeating it. Yes, people have baptized in the spirit, they received and I believe that, okay, these are some words, but then the words are not changing, you know, it's the same words, right? So uh, what do we do? You know, well, we can always ask God for more. That's one thing. I'm saying, God, you know, I, I need more. Give me new, you know, new utterances. We can always ask. But also, uh, one thing that we understand is, um, especially with regard to you know, tongues and interpretation of tongues. Uh, I've like kind of seen this in action that this person used to pray and interpret, right? The same thing. And the prayer never changed. Like you said, the words that were spoken in tongues, those remained the same. But the interpretation of the tongue was always different. And it was very accurate. It was prophetic. Uh, so... So that's something that you know, I realized that, yes, it is a work of the Holy Spirit. Well, God can use the same words and it can speak of different things. You know, it's just like, you know, pardon my example, but I'm just trying to explain it. It, it is just like, you know, an algebra where X equals 10. It's for that particular problem. For that particular, how many of you studied maths, algebra? Everybody, okay, so there's a 
you know you need to calculate a plus b equals something where a equals thing so it doesn't mean that every time you see a it means 10 no right there are some constants where pi equals 22 by 7 but then there are some variables where you say okay this equals different so i guess it could work that way right but we can always ask god for more right because it's a spiritual language and we see that it's not like this syllable this word it means this equals this no it's it's doing some deep work in us there is spiritual edification um and so on so it's a vehicle um yeah okay still not clear about tongues and only pentecostal churches do but in other churches it doesn't and in a few churches there are sermons being interpreted in different languages okay yeah so so we looked at that uh, in the sense um, okay some churches uh, em, uh, or encourage this okay some in some churches it's taught and some churches it is encouraged for the believers to to enter into this experience um, yes and some churches don't you know why is that maybe they don't have a revelation there could be a number of reasons right um, and uh, yeah, with regard to sermons being interpreted interpreted in different languages, you know that's a very natural phenom phenomenon, right? It's not it's not equal to tongues and interpretation of tongues, right? So one speaks in a language, and then there is a person who knows that language, and who also knows the language that they're going to interpret into, and they do it. So it's a very natural uh, act, uh, physical phenomenon, not a supernatural work. Right. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. So uh, what we're going to do is it's uh, eleven, uh, almost eleven fifteen. So what we're going to do is take some time to pray, right? Um, and so I'm just going to request uh, all those who are in person class. You know, you can just stand up and just pray in a circle right around. Uh, stand in a circle. Sorry. Okay. Why don't you all stand up and um, you know you can stand in a circle um, right around the wall of the room okay and uh, we're just going to take a step of faith okay okay you can move out of your chairs and can you please stand along those I don't know. and um, all those who are uh, online you know i just want to encourage you to do the same in the sense of you know if you can um, maybe you have the privacy wherever you are listening to this uh, i'm just going to request you to you know ask god pray and, um, and take the step of faith to speak out in the language that the Holy Spirit is putting in your heart. Okay, yeah, so stand around, please. Uh, spread out, spread out, and yeah, right here, yeah, you can spread out, please. You can come forward a bit, come forward a little bit, and spread out, everyone, right? Okay. In one line, please, not two lines, just one line. One line, okay, it's just one line. So. Everybody, is, you just make sure there's somebody on your left and on your right and not anybody in front of you or back of you. Okay, it's one line, right? Okay, you can you can give some space between you if, if there is. Just give, give some space. Yeah, can you just move around? You just feel comfortable, just relax, okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to just pray and ask the Lord Jesus. Who's the baptizer? He's the Lord Jesus. He's the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So uh, we're going to ask the, the Lord, say, Lord, you know, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit. And uh, I want to, uh, and release your gifts in me. Release the gifts of the Spirit, whatever, all the gifts, God, release them in me, right? And, um, and we're going to praise the Lord, thank the Lord, and we're going to just wait and perceive what is it the Lord is putting in your heart, right? Putting in your spirit. Maybe you sense a word that's coming up, you know, a word that's coming up. Um, and it's not a word, it's not a sound that you know, or it's not a sound that you understand, but you go ahead and give voice to it. You speak it out, right? Loud enough so you can hear. So you speak that out by faith and, uh, and whatever words that are coming out, you speak it out by faith. Remember, you know, we are talking to the Lord Jesus. And the Bible very clearly says, I think it's Luke chapter 11, he says, you know, if you ask the Father for a bread, 
you know, will he give a stone? If you ask him for a fish, will he give a serpent or a scorpion? No, you know, he will not do that. So how much more your heavenly father? And this he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit. So you can reject all fear. You know, when I'm, I'm talking to my father and he gives the best for me and he loves me. So you can put aside all fear. Okay. Now you go ahead and thank the Lord initially. You know, after we have prayed, you go ahead and thank the Lord. Maybe you can lift your hands and you can just thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for baptizing me with the Holy Spirit. Uh, thank you for filling me. Thank you for releasing your gifts. Go, th go ahead and thank the Lord. But, you know, you can't speak two languages at the same time, right? So you thank the Lord in your language, maybe English, Hindi, whatever. But after that, you start, you know, speaking these words that are welling up, that are coming up in your spirit, right? By faith, you speak it out. So no compulsion, but feel free. But this is something that God has for every believer okay and there are some of us uh, our, our faculty and also um, our staff and also our second year students they will come and they're just going to lay hands on you and pray right they're going to lay hands on you and pray just to encourage you and so that you can go ahead and speak out and be bold enough to speak that out okay <clears throat> okay i'm just going to pray um, a simple prayer and you can also pray the same thing right in your heart and you can even you can speak it out to say this, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Uh, I come before you now and I ask you, Lord, to baptize me in the Holy Spirit and release the gifts of the Spirit in me. Enable me to pray out in other tongues, God, and release all the gifts of the Spirit in me. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Fill me right now. This I ask in your precious name. 